Hello and welcome, I'm Tyler Disney and in this video I'm going to lay out a mechanical room and in doing so I want to demonstrate how to avoid the two most major mistakes that people make when doing modeling in Revit MEP and that is the mistake of over modeling everything too early and that is the mistake of spending hours looking for families that they don't actually need because they're in such an early stage of design. So. I'm going to walk through how to lay this out, how to not spend all your time over modeling things, and I'm going to show you how to use really simple families to perfectly adequately model what you need to model. So this is a video about intentional modeling, not over modeling. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make all of the equipment I need to lay this out. So I'm going to use my magic box family, which you can buy. It's on mepguy.com if you want. It's also a pretty simple family, so you could definitely make it yourself. Um, but one way or another, you should get a family that operates uh, a lot like the magic box. And so I'm just going to demonstrate how to use it on the first piece of equipment, and then I'm going to rip through and build the rest of them and speed up the video. Okay, so here we go. We have the magic box. I want to make my heat exchanger equipment. So I've made a table of all the equipment and the rough dimensions that I need. I'm going to find it. I'm going to rename it uh, M dash exchanger, and I'm going to select this instance. I'm going to say edit type. I'm going to rename it to the exchanger one and then i'm going to set the dimensions so that's 59 inches by 29.8 inches and the width is 12.3 inches uh, for the tag i want my type mark to be exchanger I'm gonna hit okay i'm gonna go ahead and tag that and i'm gonna set the mark to what i want it to be Okay, so I've got my heat exchanger. I'm just gonna duplicate that exact process for all for all of them. So for the next one, I bring in the magic box again. I rename it M-CH for chiller, and then I set the type, and that is all I need to do. Okay, I'm gonna speed it up now. Okay, so now I've got all of the major equipment that I need for this initial phase of design. And I wanna stress something here. This took me like 10 minutes of data entry, right? It did not take me hours and days going to the ends of the internet looking for manufacturer families that may or may not work well. And these are all very simple. They don't have a bunch of extra polygons and data that will slow my model down for a initial phase of design this is a very efficient way of doing things and now i also want to stress that i didn't say what phase of design this necessarily is for is it sd is it 50 dd that's something that you need to get on the same page with uh, on your team you need to decide what you're doing what the appropriate level of detail and level of development is for the particular deliverable that you're doing basically it comes down to when you open up revit you should know before you open it up what it is that you are going to do and why you are going to do it. So for this project, what I'm doing is an early phase design layout of a mechanical space. And why I am doing it, it is because A, the cost estimators need something to do an initial cost estimation, and B, because there are some things that we need to begin coordinating with the architect and civil and whoever else. So we basically need something on the drawing so that as a design team, we can come together and start working on the design in a collaborative manner. Now, what this implies is that it would be a mistake. Like what we don't need right now is I don't need to be connecting all of the pipes to all of the connectors and all the families and modeling valves and backflow protectors and crazy things like that at a level of detail that is simply not appropriate and a waste of time. So I've got my families, that was really quick. I can start using them rapidly and um, and also that I know that I'm not going to be modeling things in, in crazy depth. So, all right, let's get on with it. Um, we need to start laying this equipment out. And again, this, this is nothing to do with Revit. This is just your sort of intuition as a designer. Maybe you've got red lines, someone sketched up basically how they want this laid out. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. Um, so I've got this, uh, uh, the bore field here. Uh, 
looks about okay. So while I'm in here now, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some initial clearance zones. Um, so this is just a family that I use to indicate, you know, access to make sure that I don't make that oh so common engineer's error of, uh, you know, designing a screw where you can't actually visit a screwdriver, fit a screwdriver into. Don't be that guy. Don't be that engineer. A quick look in uh, 3D. Yeah, okay, I've missed my fan coil unit. You go over there. Uh, you, should, you should go about 10 feet off the deck, something like that. Up in the ceiling, anyways. Okay. Okay, equipment's roughly laid out. Again, that took what, five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. Now oh, we're going to get this cooling tower up a little bit. It may be. I think it needs to be up on a rack or something. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now uh, I've got that all roughly laid out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out uh, piping. And uh, the thing with piping is that <laughs> this is where so many people go wrong. They start connecting up the pumps to everything else. And it's like, no, that's not what's important. That's not what's relevant at this level of detail. And so that is just a waste of time. What is important is things that the cost estimators might need to know and things that might be important for collaborating with other disciplines. We've laid this room out to give ourselves space for the pump trains and everything, the pipe trains and everything else that we need. So we don't need to model it now. There are single line diagrams, the cost estimators to base all that stuff off of. So we don't need to do that. It would be a mistake to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show major distribution in and out of this space. So I'm going to start with ground loop piping. So I'm going to go pipe, four inch diameter. I'm going to start about eight feet and I'm going to choose my ground loop water and start high penetrate i'm going to go low below grade and that's why this is an interesting um from a coordination perspective civil might have something to say about this i got those in there give it a check in 3d that seems about right oh that does that's not right that needs to be low needs to be negative 50. It's a bore field. It goes down in the ground. Um, that's why we check things in 3D, because we always we always make errors. All right, piping, I'm going to show the condenser water piping to the cooling tower. Um, four inches, we're going to start again. We're going to start high. These are the condenser water pumps, so I'm going to come out. I'm going to drop down close to the ground, but not buried. And I'm just going to take them right here. That's all we need to do for right now. Uh, I, I did this wrong. Mm, filter. I'm going to show you how to quickly do that. Unselect pipe fittings, switch that over to condenser water piping. Filter. Condenser water piping. All right, that's done. I'm not going to show this connected up to the pumps. I'm not going to show this going over to the heat exchanger um, and the chiller. That is not what this is about. Um, this is about showing major distribution to and from. Okay, so I've got uh, a little bit more piping to do. And look, piping's done. <laughs> it took, what, five minutes? Seven minutes? Piping is done. That's all we need for this. We've got the size. We've got the approximate location. We can start arguing with other people about, you know, it shouldn't, they don't want it over the door. They want it over here. There's a bee in this fire protection, whatever. So much of early design is just getting something on the document so we have something to argue about. And that's really the first stage. So getting it all tightly packed in and, and dialed in is a complete waste of time because it's all going to move 10 times anyways. This is easy to move if this was all connected in 3D and going down here into the chiller and everything. 
that would not be easy. It'd be so much time. So um, we're done here. Uh, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, rough in some, some duct work for my air handler. So, so I'm going to draw my duct here. And uh, this is going to be, you know, something like 48 by 48 by 30 coming out of the duct, uh, coming out of the air handler. Elevation is fine. That's probably fine. And again, this is another point of coordination with the architect. I need to cut out here for a louver. Uh, the architect would give me one here, but I don't need it here. I need it here. So I've got this. This is just the duct connection, though. I'm going to have a plenum. So I'm going to model in a bit of duct so that they know the size that I need. So I'm going to draw a duct again. And I'm going to make it, I'm just going to make it 60 inches by 60 inches. Let's say I've decided that's how big I want my, my louver to be. So my plenum is going to be 60 by 60. So, I, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to back this guy off a little bit. And I'm going to go back to here. There's multiple ways of doing this, but this is the quick and dirty way that you can do for coordination with the architect. Is it perfect? Is it connected? No. Does it get the job done? Yes. Did it take 10 seconds? Yes. Duct. Plenum. The architect gets it. Oh, they need a hole in the wall. All right. Down here. Moving on. Um, yeah, on the other side, there's nothing to coordinate here. Well, I guess there is something to coordinate here. Um, I'm going to get that. Pull it out. Uh, let's give it. I missed. All right. Get here. Pull it out, and then I'm going to go up to 12 feet or so. I always do this. I always give myself more room just so that Revit makes the uh, makes the turn, and then I and then I nudge it in uh, to where I want it to be. All right. Let's see. How does that look? Looks fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. And so we're going to need a penetration through that wall too. And this is going out to the space, obviously. Okay. Look, this took, I forgot to look. It didn't take very long to, to lay out this whole room. Oh, you know what? I didn't, um, I didn't tag things. So let's quickly go through and tag things. That Okay, again, I've decided, I've had a conversation with my design team. We've agreed that this is the level of detail and information and development and modeling that we need for this deliverable. So I got in here, I knew what I was doing, I knew why I was doing it, I laid it out. It took no more than a half hour. What was that, even 20 minutes maybe? And we've got something that's useful that we can use to work with the design team. like. This is how you should approach everything you're doing, no matter what phase it is, if it's early, if it's late. The point is not to do X, Y, or Z. It's to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, and then to just quickly get after that. You might accuse me, uh, and it's a good point, that like I did some things wrong, right? Like, like this over here. Um, just because I didn't happen to have a fitting at the moment on hand, um, that would make this connection to the plenum and I didn't want to get into fussy like oh I need this to connect into with the tap fitting into a different duct or maybe I should drill. like no forget it just just stick it in there <laughs> you can fuss with it later but fussing with it now is such a waste of time so get it done um, you know in the days of CAD all of these would be boxes it would look like this it would look exactly like this all these things would be boxes they'd be blocks right I, I barely learned CAD before I went into Revit, so I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really know. But it would be this level of detail, and like that is all that you would need that would be appropriate. So why, when we go to Revit, do we start modeling things to the nth degree and getting crazy hyper-detailed LOD as-built 500 families? No, it's insane. Model intentionally, model appropriately, don't over-model. And, and get families that you can use rapidly and quickly without having to hunt around all over the internet okay that's it that's all i have to say i uh, appreciate you watching the video hope it gave you some value and i hope it helped you avoid wasting time on deliverables if you have any questions don't hesitate to leave a comment and uh yeah thanks for watching